Alrighty, folks, how you all doing? Cross the six here. Hope you're all having a wonderful, wonderful day. And uh, welcome to the channel. And if you're new around here, then uh, thanks for tuning in. I uh, hope you stay to the end, hopefully. Uh, and hit that like and subscribe button. Really helps the channel out. And thank you to the new subscribers. I really appreciate that. And I hope you go on to really enjoy my content and leave comments and all the rest of it down below. Anyway, on with today's gameplay. We are in the tier 10 Hori 3. <laughs> well, that sounds like something out of a. <laughs> Out of the porn industry, doesn't no! it? The Hori 3! <laughs> or the Red Light District. Uh, costs you a lot of money, apparently. Yeah, lucky, mm. lucky thing. Anyway, <laughs> I'm taking a position <laughs> on mines uh, that not a lot of people generally tend to go to, but it's great for defensive. And if you can get there first, you you can generally tend to defend this kind of north northeastern side of the map. And sometimes you get shots up into the middle, if depending on whether the uh, enemy is silly enough to poke out uh, and just happen to come in front of your gun. But this turned out to be a fairly decent game, actually. So you'll have to watch to the end to see what the results were. And it was a result I wasn't expecting, in, in all fairness. Uh, so as I say, just stick it to the end. It's only a few minutes. What's wrong with you? Come on. Now, I, I really enjoy playing Tank Destroyers, as you already know. And I was quite surprised because when I ground up to get to the Hori 3, um, as I said in my previous video, you generally tend to do a lot of grinding, don't you, and find that, you know, the tier 10 isn't quite as good as you thought it was going to be. Um, but the Hori 3, I've got to be honest, is turned out to be, for me personally, a pretty decent tank. It's fairly decent accuracy, as you've just seen there. Um, and it's consistent. It's one of these uh, tank destroyers that you, you generally tend to do quite well in. I, I kind of put it in the same category as I do with my Super Conqueror. Uh, you have more better games than you do crap games. Uh, you still get crap games, and of course you do. Uh, and especially if you don't hide that lower glacis. And it, 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 it does get penned quite a bit, as I say, if you're not careful with that lower glacis. But it's, it's kind of get up close and personal sort of tank destroyer, in my humble opinion. Yes, it's a fairly accurate cannon uh, and all the rest of it, but I don't know. It just it feels better when you're kind of getting a bit closer to the action, uh, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think it does. Now, the mines map generally tends to fear the, the north spawn. Uh, predominantly, when you start in the north, usually nine times out of ten, you go on to win the game because uh, the south is a lot more open, and if, you, if they get into the middle... Uh, from the outset then it's pretty much game over most of the time uh, because they've got a freebie haven't they look at the viewing range that they would have they're going to spot everything in and around the, the southern part of the map uh, so Wargaming could certainly do with revamping this and I know they were talking a while ago that from the uh, north side spawn they were going to make it so that you could get up into the middle uh, without having to go up into the middle and then you know come round through the rocks where you go through that that sort of dangerous area, the killing zone, I like to call it. And they were going to make it that you could drive straight up there. Um, but they haven't done that as of yet. So I don't know whether that's still in the pipeline or not. Who knows with Wargaming? Uh, they you know, they make their own mind up about things and don't generally tend to listen to the player base. Uh, this map could definitely do with a, a good revamp. I mean, if you look over on the zero line, eight, nine line, they could do so much with this map. They really could. You know, get rid of a, a load of that, them rocks and whatnot and, and open it up a bit more. Make it a bit more uh, enjoyable to play and don't have it as a favourable northern spawn all the time. But, yeah, generally, this map is... It's okay. It's not my favourite map. Not by any stretch of the imagination, that's for sure. But I guess you just got to play with what you've got, haven't you? That's what she said. <laughs> There's always got to be innuendos, hasn't there? Huh? Yeah. I always put these little innuendos in, I don't know why. So, a very dear friend had flown uh, quite a few thousand miles over from Canada uh, to come and spend some time with me, him and his lovely, lovely wife. Uh, and we've been playing together, uh, certainly for nearly the last 10 years every night, uh, you know, it was part of our clan. And um, yeah, so they came over for the first time, uh, all the way from Canada to spend some time up here in Bonnie, Scotland. Uh, where we managed to go and see a few things and let them explore uh, <laughs> the, the Scottish cuisine <laughs> called Black Puddin. Eh? You liked that one, Dennis, didn't you? Eh? I told you it was a hearty meal and you were going to be in your element. <laughs> you should have seen his face when I first put it in front of him. <laughs> and I've been telling him about this for weeks, you see. Months, in fact. 
So when you come over, you, you got to try some black pudding and haggis. We never managed to get to the haggis bit, but the black pudding is... Uh, <laughs> it's all spices with pig's blood, <laughs> all squished together. That sounds almost cannibalistic, doesn't it? <laughs> and I don't think he was too keen <laughs> at the thought of it, but he seemed to enjoy it. <laughs> Although, in all fairness, and, and I'm not taking any responsibility from this at all, he did have a bit of a dicky stomach uh, for a few days, but that's not down to me. <laughs> I know nothing. I'm not taking any responsibility for that whatsoever, but I'm, I'm glad you, you made a, a full recovery, buddy, and it didn't ruin your holiday. But it was a pleasure and an honour hosting you, and uh, thank you very much for coming over to see me. But anyway... It, was, it wasn't funny at the time. I felt sorry for him because uh, every two minutes, you know, I had to rush to the, to the bathroom. But he's all right now. He's okay now, <laughs> thankfully. But we've been playing tanks every night pretty much for the last 10 years. So, And we'd never, ever actually met. And so it was really nice just to uh, finally meet up. And we're hoping, hoping that in the next year or so, the rest of our plan are all going to meet up and we're all going to go over and do uh, the World War II stuff. We're going to go down to a place called Boventon Camp Tank Museum down in Dorset. Uh, I used to be stationed there when I was in the military many, many moons ago. Uh, so I've been there a couple of times and it is very interesting. And some of the, the exhibits they've got there is just incredible. Uh, and then we're going to go over to Normandy where we're going to go and do the beaches of Normandy and we're going to go to the war graves and all these lovely different kind of things that we're going to get to see and hopefully uh, fly through Berlin where the, apparently there is a, a wonderful museum there, World War II Museum. So that would be interesting. And our very dear friend, TX Tiger, he is a native German speaker. Uh, he's, uh, he's one of these people that can just speak numerous languages. <laughs> so he's got to be there because he's our interpreter, or else we, <laughs> we'll end up somewhere like Switzerland or somewhere like that. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. That should be quite good. So, yeah. One of them things that's on the bucket list, methinks. And I think it's good as well that in our own kind of inevitable way, if you like, it, it gives us a chance to pay homage and respect uh, to all of them, many thousands of, of men who died really fighting for our freedoms. Uh, although you wouldn't think we've got many freedoms at the moment uh, with the way that these governments are, are behaving. But that's a, that's a different story for another day. Don't get me on that pedestal. <laughs> I'll be there all day long, <laughs> castigating them, because uh, I don't have a lot of time uh, for these people. I really don't. I just think it's gone. It, this world has just gone crazy at the moment. It's just gone mental. With all the things that are going on, it's just... I, I don't know. I, I, I can't wrap my head around it. It's just too much for me. But, you know, I've got my opinion on things, and, and they'll stay my opinions, because I, I don't think this is the arena for me to start uh, spouting about what I believe in. <laughs> I know one thing for sure, that's that, that's definitely for sure, is Wargaming need to change this bloody RNG. <laughs> that's one thing I will spout on about. And another thing I'll definitely, definitely bang on about is when are we getting some more maps? The maps have become very, very stale and they're just, you know, just... Uh, and I just wish they'd hurry up. And, they took all these maps out to revamp them all. What's happened to them? And I know that Des Games did a thing recently. It was like a little poll as to what maps you would like to see come back into the game. Now, I don't know whether that's a precursor to uh, Wargaming releasing some updated, revamped maps or not. Who knows? Uh, I'm not in the know. I'm not in that little click of uh, the higher echelons of World of Tanks, shall we say. Uh, but it would be good if we certainly got a few new maps because, I mean, let's, let's be honest about it. We need them now, don't we? I know we got, uh, Od was it Odyssey Bay? Um, and I love love that map. I think it's an, an amazing map and it looks beautiful. And I could see myself settling a house there with a few hula hula girls uh, serving me pina coladas whilst on my deck chair. <laughs> I don't dream of winning the lottery at all. Oh, no. <laughs> could you imagine? Could you imagine getting that phone call? You know, from uh, the, well, I do the, the, it's called the Euro Lottery over here. Uh, but it's called different things in, in different parts of the world. But for me, it's the Euro Lottery. Could you imagine winning that kind of money? Eh? What you would do, what would you do with that kind of money? If, if you just made that phone call to say, oh, I think I've won something. And they say to you, are you sat down? 
Uh, yeah. Well, congratulations. You've won the jackpot. 186 million pounds. What? What would you do with that money? Seriously, what would you do with that money? Uh, it'd just be incredible, wouldn't it? Would I stay in the United Kingdom? Would I, buggery? I'd be gone. <laughs> I would be gone. No, I'd be like a fucking rat up a drain pipe. I'd be gone <laughs> to jump this ship. <laughs> But, well, the chances of me winning the lottery, I think I've got more more chance of winning the lottery every day for the next 10 years <laughs> wearing a pair of Stevie Wonder sunglasses than I have of ever achieving uh, the accolade of being one of the lucky ones. And uh, this is the other thing I don't understand as well. And, and my very good friend, TX Tiger, uh, who lives in Texas, when they do the Texas lottery over there, and I think it's the whole American system uh, in itself, is that when they win the jackpot, they get offered to take a lump sum, which isn't the jackpot. And even if they do decide to take the jackpot, the IRS and all the rest of them just take their cut of it all. And it's, let's say the jackpot was $355 million and you win the $355 million. Well, on paper, you've won it. But in reality, you're lucky if you come away, I don't know, <laughs> with $80 million. All right, I know that's still a lot of money and it can last you for your lifetime. But over here in Blighty, if, say, the jackpot's 186 million on the euro and you win it, you get 186 million. <laughs> and that's it. And you only pay interest on the, on any uh, profits that you make from that, you know, like the interest that have been in, in your multiple bank accounts. <laughs> but I, I never understood that about the American system. Uh, and I don't know whether it's because it's greed on the government's part. Uh, I, well, it probably is, but it's no different over here anyway because they'll tax you to the hilt over here as well. Stay there. You got a decent shot at it, mate, and I now took you out. But anyway, it'd be interesting winning it, and I'd love to hear your thoughts as to what you'd do with the lottery money. <laughs> I'd start my own gaming company uh, for another World War Two and put some decent maps in with a with a few ideas. Me and my uh, good friend Booty Forty Four, uh, my dear friend who came to visit me. But anyway, we're going to win this game now, which is highly unusual for the northern sp for the northern spawn to lose. But it looks like we've managed to push through. But as I say, this Hori 3, if you're thinking about getting this tank and you like playing tank destroyers, uh, then this is definitely a tank that I would give consideration to because it is pretty decent in its own right. It really is. Got a fairly decent can on it. I think they tried to make it uh, the equivalent of the Jagdpanzer 100 but not be able to do as much damage per shot. But it does a pretty fine job of defending itself out on the battlefield and getting some fairly decent hits in, that's for sure. Now, I fired loads of shots at this bloody tanker and I couldn't hit, but finally one managed to get in. So we're just down to the artillery now, and then we'll move on to the post-game stats. So damage-wise, we're, do we're doing not too bad. 4,500 damage, that's pretty decent going, really. Uh, for me, anyway, in tier 10s, because normally I, I don't last this long, generally. <laughs> Or to be a unicum. Or to be a unicum, Mike. <laughs> so is this little light tank, is he going to take him out? Or am I going to get the final kill? How would I know? How would I know? Come on. Stick your head up. Stick your head up. And he's saying, push in, push in. It doesn't work like that, Mike. I'm a one-shot. But there you go. Anyway, on with the post-game stats. Hope you enjoyed this one. And let's see how we did. So we managed to achieve a win, did need 5,000 damage, uh, fired a few shots which most hit in all fairness and we made a little bit of credit so not too bad. Anyway till next one guys take care, remember hit that like subscribe, for them bye bye.